This is a Stir Crazy Podcast Extra, The War Against the White Plague by Rob Nelson. Healthcare workers in the United States are no strangers to putting their health and well-being on the line in the service of their communities. At different moments in the history of this country, doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers have put the interests of their patients above themselves in order to prevent the spread of epidemic diseases. Nowhere has this sacrifice been more visible than during the fight against tuberculosis in the early part of the 20th century. In 1900, tuberculosis was the leading cause of death in America. During the following decade, TB, as it was otherwise known, was responsible for one in every seven total deaths in the United States and Europe. In the early 20th century, tuberculosis was popularly known as consumption due to the weight loss endured by sufferers of this disease and more grimly known as the White Plague due to the paleness of the skin and the thick white phlegm that victims often coughed up, along with blood. Nurses and doctors throughout the United States risked their own health on a daily basis to help in the fight against tuberculosis. In many instances, this proved to be a dangerous decision. Estimations in the 1920s and 1930s reflect that 12% of nursing students contracted tuberculosis during their training, and of all nurses nationwide who received aid from the American Nurses Association Relief Fund, over half had been disabled due to tuberculosis. Statistics like these frightened away many healthcare workers from accepting positions in tuberculosis hospitals and had an influence on the course curriculums in various nursing schools across the country. In 1937, only 12 out of 50 nursing schools in the U.S. offered instruction on tuberculosis treatment to their nursing students. Many nurses feared being given positions in hospitals that treated tuberculosis, and many school administrators built their course curriculums with this in mind. Tuberculosis is spread from person to person through the air when a person coughs, sneezes, or speaks. Given this fact, nurses became the most vulnerable persons at risk of contracting tuberculosis because they often cared for highly ill patients for several hours at a time. Nurses also assisted physicians during medical and surgical procedures, all at a time when preventative procedures such as wearing masks and gloves were by no means universal practices. This fear did not dissuade everyone, and some nurses and doctors who contracted TB and survived chose to use their stories to inspire other TB patients. In one example, a former nursing student who contracted TB during nursing school later returned to the nursing field as a specialist in tuberculosis treatment. When asked about her decision, she stated, I am specializing in tuberculosis nursing because I understand tuberculosis patients so well and I'm able to give them the encouragement that a nurse who has never been sick could not give. In the early part of the 20th century, doctors and nurses across the nation dedicated their lives to fight against tuberculosis. This can be viewed on the local level with the story of Dr. Nell Deffenbaugh, originally from Buffalo County, Nebraska. Throughout her lifetime, Nell was part of a medical family. Even before her marriage, Nell Carr had three brothers who all grew up to become doctors. She later married Martin Deffenbaugh, who was also a doctor and served as a surgeon during World War I. When she became a doctor herself, Nell Deffenbaugh practiced medicine with her husband in Grand Island between 1907 and 1913, specializing in tuberculosis research and treatment. In September of 1913, she accepted the position of superintendent at the Kearney Tuberculosis Hospital. At the time of her appointment, the hospital had only been in operation for a little over a year, but with her training and experience, Dr. Deffenbaugh helped to make improvements that ensured the longevity of this hospital. Just before her tenure at this hospital began, news of her appointment was received well by the community. In a Grand Island Daily Independent article from September of 1913, the author stated that Dr. Deffenbaugh comes to Kearney highly recommended as a physician and a nurse. Dr. Deffenbaugh has installed an entire corps of nurses and expects to make several other changes about the institution. At this time, the hospital had the ability to treat 25 patients at once, and in the first year of operation, treated 50 patients total. As the years passed, however, the hospital was forced to build and expand in order to treat the growing numbers of patients seeking treatment for tuberculosis. By the 1940s, the hospital grew to house 135 patients a year. Dr. Deffenbaugh was instrumental in the early days of the development of this facility. 
The fight against tuberculosis also took place in other areas of society during the early decades of the 20th century and led to the creation of some of the first public health campaigns ever formed. Led by both healthcare workers and volunteers at the local and state levels, tuberculosis associations came together to help combat the spread of this disease. These health campaigns became models for future campaigns. The achievements made by these associations included the distribution of educational materials to the general public concerning the risks associated with tuberculosis, financial assistance to tuberculosis hospitals and treatment facilities, and political support and advocacy for legislation that aided the fight against tuberculosis. The financial assistance collected by these organizations for tuberculosis treatment and research came largely from the sale of Christmas seals to members of the public. The Wood River Sunbeam published several notices at the local level urging community members to buy Christmas seals during the holiday season. In one article from November 1937, titled, Sale of Christmas Seals Helps War on White Plague, the author hoped to call the attention of local residents to Sunday, November 28th, which was to be known as Tuberculosis Sunday. This tuberculosis Sunday sale of Christmas seals was highly promoted in order to raise money for health work among the school children of rural communities. The article went on to say that Christmas seals have paid for this war. They must continue to do so. To the local and national group which have carried the prevention forward is to be credited much of the progress we have made in the war on the Great White Plague. By 1937, as this article points out, the work of tuberculosis administrations was largely responsible for the lower ranking of tuberculosis as a cause of death in the United States from first down to seventh in the rankings. However, it was also warned that we cannot lose sight of the heavy toll which the disease continues to exact. We must remember the vast amounts of prevention work to be done and we must buy Christmas seals to finance it. It means lives. With the advent of different antibiotics, streptomycin in 1944, and Isonizad in 1952, the white plague of tuberculosis began to recede as a threat in the eyes of the public. The lessons learned during this war on tuberculosis, however, created lasting positive outcomes in the field of medical treatment and the creation of national public health campaigns, which are still looked to as models for similar initiatives in the present day. The threat of tuberculosis may have lessened in the minds of Americans, but the nation continues to benefit from doctors, nurses, and numerous other medical professionals who are dedicated to the fight of preventing the spread of epidemic diseases. The Stir Crazy podcast is on a break between seasons one and season two right now, but stay tuned with us for these weekly podcast extras, and we'll be back with season two sometime in late July.